everybody and how are you? My name's Iris Smith and I'm the owner of a small business called The Flower Patch. And at The Flower Patch I make beautiful artificial flower arrangements from door wreaths, door swags, things for the home decor, things for the uh, garden decor, funeral tributes, um, weddings and much, much more. Right guys, before we start, I just wish to thank you all deeply for your wonderful, wonderful messages concerning this, the wreath that we did yesterday. Thank you to Susan, James, um, Sandra, my dear friend, um, Janine, everybody really. If I've forgotten your name, sorry, but thank you all. And uh, oh, and Juanita as well. So I just wish to say... I'm deeply honoured that you are all responding to the videos and I am very, very touched by it. So, today we're going to do an arrangement um, <clears throat> you've probably seen many times. Um, it's going to be a lantern arrangement where it goes over the top and then comes down. But this time on the lantern arrangement, I've taken a piece of dried foam and covered it in wreath wrap, just a small piece. Instead of having a candle inside, I've placed that inside and we're going to have a bit of flower arranging inside. So not much, but just small bits. So that is what we're going to do. And I think we may do that first. So then at least then I can shut the door or the front of it so we can bring the arrangement down and over. So I want to go through things a few things today. We are doing it in blues and uh, golds. Um, I know a lot, um, sometimes some people say, um, how do you make wreaths? The, they've questioned me how do you make wreaths what, what will stand out and sell I always seem to say uh, things like pinks and obviously you've got to make it big enough on your door because um, this is a question I, I, I've been asked you've got to make it big enough on your door what will fit and also the, the colour choice by using things like pinks and things like that that will stand out more for your neighbours or the general public that will spot it. Uh, you tend to get more re recognition from those colours you know, than you would if it was blues and things like that. Um, but this arrangement is going to be going indoors. So um, I wouldn't spray this or give it any treatment um, with it being indoors. But... You, if you was having a wreath indoors as well, uh, you've got to make sure that it withstands things like slamming the doors <laughs> or, you know, everyday use with the door, shutting it, open it, shutting it, open it, that your things are glued in properly. Right, um, so today, again, I may not use everything. I've just spotted something that I could use as well. But I've got out my fiddlehead fern. I haven't really prepared as such uh, because I want to cut down as I go along. Um, but I've got out, well, it's just a twine fern from Lily Jade's floristry. And I need to get some more of this, um, especially for Christmas. So we've got that for our, oops, for our movement and um, to give us that lovely, you know, movement going over and, you know, down on the arrangements. I have got just, these are the last uh, of the stems. I thought I counted three when I looked. Oh, perhaps not. But I've got these last uh, little white seeded heads with a bit of pine needles. Um, so I just thought I'd put those in so I can use those up. As usual guys, for the wispiness and the movement as well and also being Christmas with the conifer, this hangs beautiful and I thought we could add some of that in. I've also got out 
today just two stems of my silver dollar eucalyptus again with the colour being a bluey grey on green I think that will be a nice subtle touch to the arrangement I've also got out some that's one piece left on there but I've got this out um, that's being chomped on so well not chomped on <laughs> that makes it sound like you're eating away at it <laughs> so and then i found this single one so i've got the three um just to give that movement again going over the top i could cut this down into little bits depending on how long i want it but again you know i need it to go over and you can manoeuvre and manipulate also the stem, but move the leaves up and down the stem. And I have got out just two stems of my ficus. I've chosen the one where it's got the nice, beautiful veins in, because I thought we could have that, and that would look a nice, pretty colour. Now, I've found these. I don't know if I'm going to use these, but I've got three of them. Um, I, they were, I think there was off of the, um, maybe the hydrangeas, so if I use them, you know, then I will put them in around the centre. So, I've also just got out, and they come as they are like that, one in a pack, um, some pine cones, I could um, pull them off individually and get three of them. Um, so I've just got three out in case I want to leave them as a full stem and then just manipulate the stem itself to sit wherever on the arrangement. And of course, because it's gold guys, wispy, wispy, glittery balls. Look at those. Oh, I've got some something different there but look at those look at the movement so i may put some of those in also <clears throat> and i've also because i've just found these at the bottom of my gold bucket which is absolutely chock block um some of these little spiky thistle balls I've, there's only four left so i thought i may incorporate a three one who know two who knows but I may incorporate those as well. I've got these out, these ferns, gold ferns. Um, the, the smaller ones, they only come on a stem like that in a packet. So I thought I may add those as well as a torch. There is some oddments in here what I've chopped and some are smaller, but I thought I may incorporate those. I've also got out, um, now these was at bot the bottom of the bucket of gold things, the last that I've got of my um, holly. So again, I may place, I want to place a few at the bottom inside the lantern and maybe chop away and place the odd piece at the top. And I've also got these out, uh, like a little palm. I can't remember the correct name of them, guys, but I thought they may look nice in them. With them being slightly wider leaf, even though they're airy, I just thought that they may look pretty. Aren't they lovely? And because I want some length as well, I've got two pieces of long fern out. This one looks like it's been squashed. I may be able to straighten it. But two pieces of long fern, one, one at the top, one at the bottom. Again, for that movement going over and then down like so. And again, I've also bought out my droplet fern. Again, what are we? I've got for the length if I want to use this instead or both of them. This is from Lily Jade's pack of six for £10 and they are exceptionally long. 
you get about four of these on one stem um, and the stem is much longer I've just cut two off of one stem I've also got these glittery ruscus out just three I'm not sure if I'm gonna put them in but I've used I've got them out for backup in case and I've also got out oops I forgot to tell you I've cut down I have cut down some smaller bits to go around the center with the palm I have got out some beautiful beautiful colored blue glittery berries that I thought would look pretty in with the gold I placed it against the gold and look how it bounces off it is magnificent so we've got those and for my floral I could have used poinsettias um, I still might but I've only got four of them left there I've got others on order I'm still waiting for them but I've got these roses that I may incorporate those and the darker in the center and I think they are beautiful these are also from Lil Lily Jade's floristry wholesale and they've got their own foliage with a bit of um, cypress leaves bit of uh, wildflower and also some um, fortunia on it as well and some little buds and I've also with flowers I've got out five small little glittered daisies look at those aren't they pretty the numerous petals on them I think they're lovely and last of all I've got out some baubles or Christmas ornaments whichever you may call them but um, I thought we could add in the bigger ones in blue and there I've got um, one five different types in blue so I've got one of each out but then I've got the glittery gold in the smaller one so I don't get too much of the big baubles together so that is what we've got. Let me just grab those small poinsettias. Again, I don't, I've only got four left, so I haven't got five. Um, and I want a bit of white in, so I'm, I may use those um, just because they've got a bit of fern on and grass as well which would add nice texture and a contrast and these are the the blue poinsettias that I have left again I've got others on order I'm just waiting for the order to arrive so that's what we've got today I could use through maybe I don't know one two points that it is or three on top and one in the middle inside but that is what we have got today so I'm going to be sitting down I'm just gonna go and get the camera so it's facing further down I've got all my oh I've got all my cable ties because we are wrapping them together and fastening them on the top we are not using a foam and I have also made a bow I forgot about this um, I've got blue uh, organza ribbon with gold and silver stars and then a gold frill um, ribbon as well so that is going to sit in between as it goes up so we're going to have some up here and then below the bow and also coming out so that will be on top I've kept the ribbon out in case I may want to extend the tail ends or streamers um, to just hang slightly lower down here so let me alter the camera guys and um, again be before um, we start you know just think about uh, what you want and what you'd like your arrangement to look like 
whether you'd like it to be big or just small and think about how you know the elements you're going to put around it that you need to make it look filled or have volume and also you know give it that lovely lovely look for Christmas that when somebody comes in they spot it right and before I do the camera um, I had another uh, message sent from somebody last night there wasn't a name on it um, stating that yesterday when I did the red wreath I shouldn't have worn an orange blouse or top um, Susan a lovely lady who's always giving me support um, said it shouldn't be about what I'm wearing it's about the design which I totally agree and um, to the person who sent it I am who I am I wear what I want and again like Susan said um, it's not about what I'm wearing I can understand it may clash and some people's eyesight you know can't accept that sort of colour um, but I didn't realise and I didn't think it would bother me you know bother people but at the end of the day I'm not going to change <laughs> I am who I am and that's that so I know the the person or man or lady who whomever it was did say sorry after the message you know it should be a big no no but on them place put sorry you know fair enough you've you've voiced your opinion um, but I'm not changing for anybody I just thought I'd let you know so let's crack on So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm going to do, hopefully a little bit better. So you won't see me, I'm just hoping if I place that there you'll see what I'm doing. Let's see, I've just got to move the camera guys so I can see because I've got a hook in the Wallace. A hand holding the camera in the way. Yes. Right. So, again we're going to start in the centre. The uh, foam that I've placed in is only about nearly an in inch. I'd say half an inch if anything or just over half an inch thick. And it's about three inches wide, three inches by three inches, and half just over half a mil thick because I didn't want it sticking up too much. And I placed it in the center with it being around so I can cover around these edges with floral that you won't see. So to do that, I'm just going to place in little bits to start with. So let's just manipulate. I just want to see. That's the only thing with this these doors on this one, guys. They just keep opening. I don't want it to look too squashed. Right. So I'm going to dip it in. And I'm just going to place at the back. I don't mind it coming up slightly, but I just want it like that at the back. Now this hasn't got much of a stem on, so I may not be able to get that one in. I 
I'm doing it so you can see and I'm placing some maybe too big so let's just get it down a little bit just keep opening and shutting the door so you can see how much it is taking up So we're just going to do it like that. I won't be able to get that in. It's got no stem on it. Let's have a look. I may place one of these poinsettias in as well. And again, I'm cutting this extremely small to go with the thickness of our foam I don't again I don't want it too high as you can see it's just to add a little bit in a color instead of just placing a candle you could place a candle in and then put a bit of floral around it I do feel that I want another one there Where's the one I've been chopping on? There. So let's get... So like that. You don't really have to put a lot of anything in there. It's just to give it that little bit of a pretty look really. I'm going to pull these off, just the flowers, and I'm going to place them on picks. the other one while we're up doing it then just cut that one short as well Place one at the back, and then I'm going to have one sitting at the front. Like so. Let's have a look. I may. Do I place, uh, yeah, I may place a few of these in. Let me do it from this one. Oh, let me 
take the tag off. Again, just for a little bit of, because we, we may place the pine cones on top. I want to bring the pine cones down. Just so it's got that flow. And then one near the front. Oh my goodness. Down there. Again, I don't want to place in too much with it being just tiny. I've got white in. Let's have a look if there's anything small that I could place. Oh, yes. I've just placed, because I've got oddments of these, a little bit of holly. Just see at the back. Do I bring one? Yeah, I'm gonna bring one. I wonder if I can, if I just make a hole, I can just stick this little one in. I'm gonna get a little bit of that. And I'm just giving it a helping hand because it's got no wire in this, this bit of this holly. So I'm, making the hole for it and giving it a helping hand so that i think is enough i don't want to overdo it i just want to keep it short and sweet um, if i wish I've had to resort to a bigger bag, guys, and <laughs> with my oddments. Here's the pine leaves. I'm just going to I've got some pine just a few little pine needles here. And I may place those in as well. Right, down at the back. Maybe one at the front. I may just cut that one a little bit shorter. So that's really all I'm going to do in there, unless I think, do 
Do I use this one? We, do, we need any more. Let's place this little bit in. Saves it going to waste. So there we have that. So I can shut the door. Oops, <laughs> well, I didn't shut that very well. Right, so let me just get my scissors because I can see a leaf that is sticking out and I'm gonna just cut it shorter in the shape that it is. So I, I, Right, so that's that. So we'll place that out of the way for now. And we're going to concentrate now on what we want to do with our arrangement on top. So if I get my cable ties ready let's see now this is going to go over and then back down so i need to see how far down i want it because i don't want it just leaning like well i could have it leaning like that and then, but I want to take off, if you feel, just take off some of these little droplets. better so I'm gonna do the same with this one I just place one on top of the other so if I just cut where it stops and then just cut up so I'm showing you how to prepare as well I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me, everybody. Let's get these little droplets. So that's those two. Again, I don't know that this looks a bit bent, like it's been in. So I'll keep those on there. what I want to do I can't find where everything is today 
I'm going to court there. Again, I need to measure Yeah, that's fine. So then I'll do that with the the other one. So then I've got two long ones and I'll cut these down because they could go to the sides. So that's those. Then I want my vine. Now this is extremely long. Oops, a daisy. I've got one at that length. So I may use the smaller ones. Yeah, they're the same size. So we'll place that, two of those. I'm going to cut that one off because I may use those either side as well. So we've got those. And again, I'm just showing you how I would prepare. And this is what I would do before um, I do a video. Because I have had the odd message where somebody uh, has asked me how do I prepare everything for when I do a video. So I thought, guys, why not show you? Because uh, the lady was intrigued because she wanted to know how she would have to prepare hers as she, oops, I saved that one. As she's doing hers. One, two, three, four, five. So then I'll take another. So that's six. I'll take eight to be on the safe side. Again, I may not use them. If I don't, I can place them in my bucket for another project. So that is those. Now my conifer, I will just chop this all down because I know I will use five pieces or maybe I'll have to get another one. So that's also those. I've got two of those, so they're okay. Now I've got an oddment on here. So let's cut that and get rid of that. Don't want that. That can go in there. All right, that stem seems to be too short, so I'm going to place it on a pick. Wipe any excess glue, so that's that. So two. I'm only cutting four of these. One for the top, one for the bottom, and one for each side. So that is also those. Now, I think I may court, well, there's two there already done, I'll do push-ups, yeah. I don't think the stem's very long, so I may have to place new stems on these. I'll cut four. Again, if I need any more, I can 
just grab them. I'm going to use just two of those because that one's a bit bent. Um, I've got two of those. I'll save that one. And again, I've got this. Is, I'm thinking of the length at the moment for those. And then I've got one if I want to chop it in half. So I'm just thinking of the length. Um, I've also got two of those. And I've got this in case I may want to chop that one in half for the sides as well. I could put two each of those at the top or spread them around. And my... I can. Oh, that's just got one on. One, two. Gosh, these these do tangle. And I'll get four of those out as well. I work in fives, but what I'm thinking of, again, I've got them down there if I need five, um, is because obviously you've got two ends and then two sides. And that is what I'm thinking of. Now I've got three of these. So I'll have to think what I want to do with those because I do have the roses. I don't know about these. I'm going to hang on to those. And I've got four of these small ones. I'll save those. I'll keep the holly to the side. And I've got those as well. And I will cut these down if I'm, I'm choosing to use them so that is and I've got my baubles or Christmas ornaments so that is my preparation I take into consideration the top the bottom and either side of the arrangement as well so now this is where we start I tend to place things separately so I can see what I've got so I'm not like rummaging through everything they're separate place those with that because I like to see what I have when I am arranging things. So I place them in their own pile, so to speak. That's what we call it. So all those, all the conifer to one side. Well, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. I'll just move that for space. Three of those. Two long ones of those and some short ones. Right, so, if I just place that there a moment. Oh my gosh, all the glitter. So I hope to the lady who's called Louisa that that will help you um, look, you know, think about how you would start to um, organize your floral and foliage before you start but you 
once you've made your mind up what you'd like to place in it. I do also sometimes have backup items or flowers or foliage in case something I've chosen doesn't look right. So what we're going to do is start, that one just keeps bending. And we're going to cross over like so because we're going to have a top and a bottom. I usually leave a hand space in between for the bow. So that will go up and down because I am going to make it quite uh, big because I like big and I will manipulate it to go down like so once it is on attached to the lantern. But I don't do that just yet because we're working on a flat surface. So let's, what have I done with my cutters? And I'm just cutting to where the droplets start and finish. So that is my hand size because once the bow sits on it, that will be sat there. So I want also, I'm going to put the ficus underneath, but I'm going to slightly go off to the left and then back at the top, twist it slightly back to the right. And that also will sit under and I'm going to do the same with this off to the right back to the left and then off to the right so I've got three turns because it's long enough so that will go underneath also so I just cross them over so they're touching each other you can cut these stems later if you feel like you want to cut some of the droplets and shorten things that is fine um, I could make this slightly shorter so if I decided let's do it and show you if I take four off so that's there take four off of this side as well so it's balanced so we have it so the ficus then be becomes a, a similar size well longer should I say than what the droplet fern is because I'm placing them now over each other, keeping that hands width in between. Then I want one of my vines, so I will place that also in there. I can just make sure it sits. And then get another one and do the same here. I mean, you haven't got to keep hold of them, guys. You know, I've just showing you the hands width that we have. So we'll put that vine there a moment. Then if I want a conifer and I want it to go slightly to the off to this side, then I place it in and then just tilt it downwards. And then I bring another one here and tilt it this way. So you've got that effect. And then you do the same on this side Again, if you wish to keep hold of it, 
you know then you can hold it but you can just place it on your mat and so you can see now I want to keep those together so I'm going to get a cable tie and I'm going to go this side or should I say in the centre and I'm holding them now all together. So now I can manipulate them into any position because they are now where I'd like them to be. So, so once you're happy and you've manipulated it, let me make sure it's tight enough. Yeah, cut off the end of your cable tie. Now you will have little bits like this hanging around. You can now just cut them down so they're not as long. Don't cut them right to where, well, I, I always say don't cut them right to where the cable tie is that it could easily slip through. I tend to leave at least, you know, half an inch. I turn it over so I can see and I just snip where I feel the long pieces of the stem are. because we don't want them catching on all the other foliage that we've got. So now you've got that. I will get this to sit correctly. And this one, because they're very fine stems. So if you want to test Or should I say, I'd, I would keep testing it and just having a look, placing it down. So I don't mind that touching there because we're going to bend it as well once it's in the centre so it comes down a little bit. And also not as much at the top. So it's like, so, and I do it at an angle. So that is what we've got at the moment. If you want to have like some ficus coming off here, which I always, you know, like to have foliage coming all the way around, you do the same. Place it on and then just bend it into the position you want it to sit. I'm trying to think how many have I got on. One, two, one, two. That just doesn't seem a long enough stem. Oh, here we have it. So then I do the same with this one. But because I've gone that side with that stem, I want to balance the thickness out of the stem. So I'm going to bend it and place it there. So that is also now in place. Because again, our bow will sit on there. Now I want to, I don't know about these. Oh, one moment guys, my cat. Beepy jeeby. I can hear him scratching at the door. Oops, let me just alter the camera guys. There we go. Right, he's sat on the floor now watching me. I think he's got a mood on. What's wrong? What's wrong? No, oh, he's looking away. Right, he'll jump up when he's ready. Right, I'm going to place in the fiddlehead fern for a bit of movement. Now I've got this one. I'd like to place 
there in the center this one as well in the center and then I want these two if I bend them again like so going one I bend that bit sharper coming this side and then one going that side so I've got those all there in place again I've still got this here I also want to place in because I've only got two I'm going to place in again bending it I'm going to cut this a bit shorter I don't want it as long one I may put that underneath the fiddlehead fern I just move again this is what you can do if you think it's taking up too much of the others place it like so on top let's cut this one down as well which way did that go and then place that one there and then this back on top like so so again you can fasten all of those in if you wish so we'll do it so we can see that everything is going to sit in place let's get the cable tie place them how I want them and then get another cable tie and then just pull on it like that and snip off so now all of those are in and you can then go around if you wish just to tidy the longer stems up so you haven't got longer stems catching anybody or yourself again I tend to cut around half an inch but that's just my personal preference if you want to make it longer and cut just bring that a bit more in then you can there's no rule it's whatever you feel more, most comfortable with and we will fluff this up when we've done so that is what we've got I'm just going to see yep so now I'm going to place in our oops one's come off now where's that come from but we're, oh there we're going to place in our silver dollar eucalyptus Let's just wipe any glue off and what we're going to do we'll make sure that the blue side is sticking upwards let me take that little bit off at the end and I want to place one slightly going to the side so I'm tilting it again bending the stem but only slightly so when I place it on here it will go off to that side and I will do the same on these again checking the which way the colour of the leaves are placed and you can turn them round to your own desire and then place one there oops I've just pulled that one off silly me and turn that around and then do the same here 
where I'm going to have it so it's just going off to that side and then I'll do the same with this one where it's slightly going off to this side again we're gonna fluff it all up so I could I want one either side there that one's a bit long let's just cut these no little prongs off what are on them so again I'm going to do the same with this one could do it smaller leaning here and one let's take it that way leaning there so we've got all the eucalyptus around so I don't need any more of that <clears throat> I'm gonna place those on the later stage Now I've been, I want to, because these are long, bring these in as well. But I only want to keep them as they are. So I'm going to just cut some of the stem, because I don't want it that long to start with. And I'm just going to place that there. Again, we're just going from one side, placing it on the other. Again, Let's make sure that it's not too long. So it's like that. And again, I will lift them up. So we'll do this one. And bend it and place it here again because we're having all of this around as well and if you can see just bending it over even if that pops through that is okay so they will be sat like that I want to I don't know whether to add in one, two, either side there. Maybe the rows, one either side here. Because I do have the little daisies. So we'll do it with the... Let's just cut the stem again. I'm bending it like an L shape. And I'm going to lift the head that way. I'm placing one on top there. And then bend the head upwards. So then that will sit there. Just, just make sure the bow won't cover them. Yeah, they will. Right. <clears throat> so I may have to just bend it a little piece so it comes out further so just straighten up and then bend a small piece at the bottom Let's just check with the bow again. Right, that sits better. So again, now I've placed in quite a few. You can place in different areas your cable ties. Just 
bring that one there I'm going to just hold that one there a moment and then I'm going to bring one a bit further up and see where it's coming from just look underneath or just grab it oh it's right it's there one moment let me just get this settled in so I'll hold that in so that one's safe so now I've got this one that I want to place around here coming up through make sure that it doesn't catch on anything okay let's just place that one back in I think I've got it caught on something guys just <clears throat> make sure they are all in place thread our cable tie pull just pull as tight as you can and then snip off the rest of the cable tie so now they are all in and again let me check with my bow yes I can still see the flowers oh I've got a coffee here So you just basically go in side to side and side to side and then that way as well. So I'll put that one out of the way because we don't need that. Now I was thinking, not on the gold. So I may not even place those in just yet. I may bring them in because I've got four. I could easily bring them like so. But we're going to bring some of our foliage upwards and intermingle it. It looks like there's a lot of gold at the moment. But we will intermingle it with our gold and green together. So I could place one here. And then one here or I could bring them slightly longer like so you can still add in obviously some greenery bring it in again because we will fluff it up guys so let's have a look let's see about the berries Again, I may not put everything in Right, I'm going to bring these 
and just slightly again at the bottom bend that stem because you want it to be going horizontal so you slightly bend it so it sits horizontal and I will ma manipulate them into shape everything into shape when I've done Oh, it's gone out now. All that crying. And then place that one there. It's just basically you're play, placing everything on top of each other. And then place that one. If I can get it to sit straight. And I'll keep. So like that and try to keep in the you know that they've got the same length and the meat at the same length at each other you don't want one further up here than one further down and then we have I may let me just see about bringing in I'll be bringing in some more ficus. I want to place one berry there. If I can get it to sit straight. And one berry there as well. So we're getting a, the blue colour around it. So again, I want to hold those in place so they don't move. Let me just go around the leaf here and place another cable tie in so again make sure that my things are straight You know, I'd like them to sit. And then pull. So then I'll do that on this side now. And then I'll chop the length of the stems. Again, just check in that everything is in position. It can be a very, to some people, very fiddly, especially if you've got problems with your health issues with your hands. And again, pull as tight as you can. 
Now I'm going to chop the excess bits off of the stems. That's okay. Let's just have a look underneath. There's one. Oops, I've just chopped a ficus off. Oh my good gracious me, that's silly. So, and as you can see underneath, that's all what's, what it's doing. It's not, uh, you know, looking too much above here. It's, nothing's really sticking out what's going to be sharp in your hands. I've got another eucalyptus. Gosh, this eucalyptus is... Oh, I've done it again. Oh, bits keep falling off of it. Oh, my husband's home, so I'll end up with another cup of coffee, guys. <laughs> I tell you, it's like a restaurant. I can't find where the other one is. Is it on here? No, so we'll leave it. So again, I'm not going to, you know, buff it up or anything as of yet because of our, you know, rest of our foliage and everything that's going on. Let me just get another stem of ficus. And we can use another stem if uh, the ficus and we can bring it in, incorporate it, take this last one off and give it again a bend and we can place that there just to bring some more greenery above our arrangement. I mean, again, when once we, you know, fluff everything up, things will be incorporated and mixed in so it doesn't look odd that it's, so everything is flat. Now, I'm going to bring these in now, the pine cones. Let's just take the tags off. And I want one either end. I've already bent them, as you can see. They were all straight and vertical. So I'm just going to place that on there as well. And then I'll turn the other one this way round. And place that one on there. So now you've got that. So now I need a little bit more gold bringing in because I've got green and brown. So I want just the odd piece of gold. That's a bit too wide. I could bring the glitter in, but it need to be slightly shorter. Let's have a look. What do I bring in? Where's those wispy bits? No, they're too, you can't see those. Let me just get these ferns, if I can get them off, with the rubber band. Place them here in... And again, I could bring one here, the 
they may need extra length uh, stems placing on because they're not as long. So if we get a pick, we've got our brown tape, which is the nearest colour to the gold of the leaves. Place that on. We'll dip it in our glue pan first. And what I do is just place it on about there with the glue on. And then I get my tape. Go over where the glue is. So I know then the tape will stick to the glue. Come down. Again, I just want to show the Louisa what I do as well. Come back up, tear it off. Boy, I've got my glue gun on today. Get your glue gun, place a bit of glue on there. and then carry on feeding your tape around so then your glue shouldn't come off with any movement or anything. So we'll do those. Oops, that's a small one. I think I need to get rid of everything that's in my eye view, what I don't need. Then do it again. We will incorporate our roses very shortly. Get the tape over my glue. So then that bottom underside of the tape where we start We'll stick to that. Go below the stem of the fern with your tape. And then go. I go back up. It's a personal preference, but I do it. So I've given it just a little bit more, you know, support. Place glue on your tape there. And then... Just carry on taking your tape around. So then now your tape is stuck to the glue. That one's a bit bent. Again, I want to do one, two, three, four, five, six. I may not need six, but I'm just Playing it safe again. I'm going past the stem of the fern, not too much, only about between an inch to two inch. I've pulled that bit and left that bit on show. I get my glue gun, just put a little dot on it, nothing more. And then I carry on going round with my tape, which will stick to it. And I know I am safe from anything coming off. Again, I will place that in bit of glue Stick it onto there, but hold it because it will move because it's still wet. And I go over where the glue is at the top of the pick with the tape. And then I come down past the small stem on the fern. Again, about an inch to two inch. Then I turn and go back up. And then glue that tape with a little dot and then carry on 
taking the tape around. So that is four. So if we just put the first four in, then let me just cut that bit out. So I want that one. So I put a bend in it. So I want it going to that side. And then I do the same. With this, put a bend in it and take it to that side and so on. And take that on. Over here, and then that one over here. Now I'm going to fasten those in again. I'm just going under the main, the very first stem that we started with. Bringing it up and it, obviously your cable ties you get higher and put more in is not going to be as you know small as it were when you did it right at the very beginning. But try and get as close to the central stem as possible. Oops, I've just let go. Again, so now you've got that. I have got white. I think I want to just place these four whites, one here. Well, I've got two longer stems. So one here. One there. Or I could use the longer stems for that. So we'll use the shorter stem. Place that there. Where's the other one? Then that one there. Bring that there. And then place that one there. So you've got that shape. Let's get rid of these. I'm not going to put any more of those in. Place the band on them. Get those out of our way as well. Let me just have a drink. And again, you can check your bow, and your bow will sit like that. I think by looking at the bow. We're going to need, obviously, our baubles in and our, let's see, I've cut a couple of these uh, roses down just to have a look. Yeah, I don't think I'll go crazy. I only cut two down to be on the safe side. 
because we've got our poinsettias here. I'd like those there. But we could. Wonder if we could place. Because I don't. I don't think I'm going to place those in, guys. Or I'm, I might place them on the sides. I'm not going to place these wispy bits in. Let's have a look at those. I still may place those in. I don't want that greenery. I don't want those. I'm not sure about those. No, so we're getting down to where we've used a lot of our elements. I've taken it slow because I know some people I've watched videos with some people I mean they're brilliant at it but they do it really quick and again as I state many times I like to take uh, drop my speed because not everybody is as quick at picking things up so if they're there I don't want anything there. Do I bring those sm smaller? Because, yeah. I'll bend them right at the tip. And get that one straight. So that's there, that's there. Now I'm just considering, concerning, do I place one long, long rows up there? So I'm gonna cut just another two of Just thinking of placing one. That will sit on top of it. Like so. I'll do that nearer the end because I may have to get those longer. So now I've got those again, I want to place in cable ties. You may use a lot of cable ties. I tend to use them because I I like them to stay in place as I'm going along. You know, some people don't use as many as me. But again, that's another thing. Everybody's got their own way. Get that in position and another I have to keep checking that my cable ties are the correct way Just turn it around, guys, so I can see it from this side. I've lost my cable tie. Oh, it's there. Okay. 
and then do the same. If you can't grab, I'll use some. Oh my goodness! Use some of these pliers. I've got flat side to help you pull tighter on your cable tie. Right, what I'm going to do now before we carry on is fluff. So, and just bring things up so you can have an idea of how it looks being fluffed up. Again, all I do is just bend things upwards. Right, so, so it looks more volume and intermingle things with each other. You now bring a bit of foliage through. Again, let's try it with our bow because that was going to be wired around the main stem. So that would then look like that. Isn't that pretty? I definitely I think we need these two in. I just something's telling me. When you have a good instinct, guys, you know, let's try it with the bow again with those in. I mean, that will be sat further down. Just try it on our, yep. So I don't know now whether to bring those in. Something's telling me yes, but then is it going to be too much? Wispy bits. How many did I get out? One, two, three. I think. And then you can spread those either side. So I'm going to do that. So let's just that and 
again thread them around other flowers or foliage that you have placed in there <laughs> it's just not asking doing what I'm asking So like that. I think that might be better instead of the bigger leaves. So yeah, we'll disregard those today. Oh, let me put the band back on. Um, so I don't need no more of those. I think we're just left with our baubles now, guys. So, the place I can get it to sit. One there. Oh, pull it out. That one Let's just bend it. That one about there. I'm just going to place it there. That one about there. lift up that and place that one around here then I'm going to get the gold and I'm going to place those I may just place those there one there And the one just up there. Let's see about doing those now. I'm going to tie these in because I don't want these anywhere uh, to move anywhere else. So, again, another cable tie. Daisy. Before I pull it, I will place everything in place like that. Where's my And then pull on that and then do the last one of the cable tie on this side apart from the roses I want to fasten in the rose the two roses on the end
can't see it. Bring it up. And again, before I pull on the cable tie, I'll just make sure that I've got everything in place. So that's there. That one in there. And then pull that. So now let's get things in place. And I'm going to just bring up some of our foliage, again lift it, get the blue flowers sticking out, we don't want those hiding too much. So I'll place in the two roses at the end. So I've uh, twisted my bow at the back, I think. Just twist it. Use your wire like you would on a grapevine wreath and attach it around your arrangement. Going through one side to the back. Twist it. And then just cut. And then bend inwards so it doesn't catch on anybody. So then you can fluff up your bow uh, we have these two roses that I'd like to place on there as well so I'm going to get a cable tie and attach them onto some stems from underneath so if I just keep hold of where I can see there it is so I'm just going through one of the main stems or a few of the main stems, should I say. Right, that is in place. Turn that through so it doesn't stick out. So that is one rose attached to that end. And again, I'm just getting the stem, placing it where I'd like it to sit. 
let's have a look how it's sitting there. So that has got to be, I can see it, I can get things out of the way. And all I'm doing is just cable tying it to about two or three stems, cutting it off and the square bit on here and then turning it inwards so it doesn't, again, catch on anybody. Right, I've just seen a, a long stem here. So let's get rid of that and that'll be from the rose. So now the fluffing. So sorry about the length of time guys. Again, I just want to go at a smaller pace so Louisa can see everything and that is what we've created by just doing that and using tie wraps or cable ties um, at the bottom you know to go around at certain stages again I don't leave it till I've got I've finished the whole of it before I put a cable tie on, I put cable ties on throughout different stages just to keep what I've got in place. So again, you can carry on fluffing up if that's what you wish to do. Uh, you may want to fluff up once um, you've placed it in the uh, onto your arrangement your lantern so there is our lantern and I want to go here so again up and over and that is how it's going so now I need to place in um, you I can either use another cable tie which I find stronger than a cable uh, a floral wire because of the weight of everything and I will attach it through here and then back up. I won't attach it to the handle, I'll just do it there. So I may need two. So on this occasion I will use white because it's white. So I will use white cable ties. So what I tend to do, I'll place two together first. So then it gives me that length immediately. So I will place it through this, not here first, because then I'd be searching for the cable tie 
so I will go through I can see a little bit there of, go under some stems bring it round till you can see it and let me just get that out of the way that's better so now I've got it through the back like so and I put two together so I could pull tight in two different areas I could perhaps just get away with one but I'm going to give it two and we're going to sit and then now we're going to place it through the hole here to the back if you haven't got that like I've got then wonderful now I'm going to just get the cable tied Get it in position. You can place more. Just get that leaf out of the way. You can place more cable ties on it once you've placed in your first one if it's slightly loose. I've got a feeling this might be still a little bit loose. As I say, loosey goosey. So I've done that. Now that actually is quite firm. I can't see the other side. But <clears throat> let me get my pliers, just to give that extra hand of pulling on it, like so. And then I will snip that off. Now, as you can see, it's just going up. Now, this is where you, if I, let me alter the camera now, guys, now that we're further up. So, let me, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see. Maybe come in with my camera also so again you can just see now it just goes up now again I like to go diagonal so this is now where you start bending this top part slightly over I won't bend this because I want this to go down so it's basically up and over so now you can manipulate your stems. I don't, some people I've seen do it all at one go. I do it little pieces, well not little, but a few stems at a time, just so I can see, and I bend the main ones first. And then I start bringing the rest over with it. As you may see, and I have to keep checking that it's how I'd like it. And you just keep playing around with it, guys, until you are happy with your arrangement to how it's sitting I want to tilt those again just slightly I'm going to bring that vine down that side instead of having it centre I'm just bending bits of foliage and sing stems 
in place so they sit how I would or how, how I feel I'd like them to sit. Right, one of the baubles have come out. <clears throat> so what I do if one of the baubles come out, I glue it onto a stem. So I will place that there. Just fluffing up my bow, guys. Right. Oh, let's have a look there. Again, this is only a one-sided arrangement, right? It's still a bit uh, loosey-goosey for my liking. So I'm going to fasten it in another area of the stem. So I'm just going to thread it through again to, let me just Bring it through. I'm just going to cut that bit. Can't get it. don't want that bit going there. Let's lift up and have it under. bit on the I can't see it there. it was just catching on something Just make sure these are down as well. And if you feel that it's not then another tip again if you feel it's not full enough or it's missing something then just get a few bits 
Right, that's is bringing up back up there. Just get a few bits and glue them in like you would if you was doing a wreath. Sorry, you've got the backs of it facing you. Now, I feel that I could get away with placing in maybe these last few bits of foliage that I have spare here. Not that one. Has that one got wire? No. I've got the, you know, the rest of the baubles. I could easily bring these you know maybe one here or one up there or even bring one down here so and then i've got some bits of foliage left so i feel that i could here i feel under this blue flower we definitely need foliage so i'm going to glue And then just bend that slightly. Just so then it's got a little bit of foliage under. I don't like it to look too lonely and lost. And I feel that I could glue a piece there. So with our Christmas ornaments, I may bring these two down the bottom. So what we have is that, because this that's the ending of the foliage, this seems to be a little bit lost by itself. So to add to that, by bringing just that down, that will also add to uh, your arrangement. Now, I've gotten, I can't really glue that onto anything because it needs fastening. So then I would get, again, a smaller tie wrap or cable tie, and I would place them on like so. So I've got some green ones, what a smaller, and much much thinner and I keep treading on my scissors which are here the same colour of the stem much thinner that's why I have different sizes and I would attach this then how I would like it to sit on to my stem I will place two in so it's got extra support I want one higher than the other like so so now I will attach another one and I'm only attaching it around the main stem of the ficus so that they sit in place and then I will just cut those and to hide your mechanics stick a leaf on I mean, I've got this little bit of ficus that hasn't got a stem in it. I could place that at the back and cover my mechanics. So I will sit it just there. 
so it hides the mechanics. So if I then just bring that in, sit those back on top. Right, so, so that finishes that. Now I could as well maybe get away with a bit of ribbon. That's the reason I said I'd kept the ribbon out. I could bring some tail ends coming down. So all I would do, it gives me a chance to use this roll or hope nearly use it. Where's my scissors? Just measure how long I would want them. I'm going to cut there. I'm going to do two of those. And then I'm going to do one of the blue. And I'm just you know, going the same length, I'll dovetail this one, so then we'll have the gold, the blue, and then the gold. Do it that way. So you've got three streamers going down. So then I pinch together like so. I will get a tiny bit of wire, go around a few one way and then a few the other. Twist at the back so you're twisting like so. And you've got then a piece of wire left to wrap around one stem. Just make sure you've got your ribbon in the position or order that you wish it to sit. So now I've done that, I'm going to attach it here to another uh, stem. And then I could also, if I wish, bring another one up here so this gap isn't so lonely. So let's just find a spare stem that's strong enough. There we have one. Go through one side with one piece of wire. Twist like you would again at the back of um, your grapevine. Let's just cut that off and then bend it around the stem. So then bring in your bow so it looks like it's coming off of the bow above I mean you can curl it if you want so let's just see what it's like and again curling it, I just go like this, fold it over, keep folding it over, so it's going up, as far as you like, and take, grab the central piece out, 
I can grab it. I've got no nails. And then pull, just pull it down. I can't get it. There we have it. So you've got to swirl. You could do this around a pen or a pencil as well. Which maybe look better than my my chubby fingers. I wonder if I've got a pen here. Oh yeah. So then you just get a pen, any pen or pencil. Wrap it around till you're happy where you want it to sit. Pull out the pencil or pen and you get a better swirl than what my hands are. So let's do that one with this. So let's just cut that end a bit better. feel some wire sticking in me. And you can do it with this one as well. Just wrap around the pen or pencil. Start at the bottom because you can just go in a diagonal circular shape and it will do it for you. You can just slightly loosen it a little bit. You can have it like that, as you can see. Let me just loosen that. I think that one's a bit too tight. So, and then you can do the same up there. So, if I just cut that, I want to try and use this, guys. Put that together with that one. Measure it, do it again if you if I've got enough. Yeah, and again, pinch, place them in the order again that you'd want to, them to be in, pinch here at the top with about an inch or so spare. Go one way with the wire and go the other way with the other side of the wire. And then twist a couple of times at the back so that does come undone. And then you can bring that there. Or if you want, you can bring it up here. You can have it, you know, anywhere on the uh, wreath, a wreath, the, the arrangement that you wish. See, now I think that may spoil it. You could place one on this side. So it's got it at the back. Let's place one on the back. Again, going through. Tw 
twisting. Sorry about the noise, guys. They're doing the finishing touches to my neighbour's roof. Cut that. Then bend your wire around the stem. Don't think we need it that long. So I'm going to cut it there, there, and then dovetail that one. So we've got that at the back so oops so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna open these ribbons I don't want them closed I did that end up. All right, we'll fluff our bow up now. Oh my goodness. Let's just clear our mess. It'll be about two and a half hours this video, guys, but I don't I don't personally mind. I just rather get you know do it so especially for the new beginners i've had a few quite a few messages where people are just starting out and they've come across my channel and um, they're glad that i do it slow i've had a few who said that do it slower because they've tried keeping up with other people and they do it too fast and they you know and they can't seem to grasp what they're saying without having to keep stopping the video um, I'm not like that. I tend to like to do it at this pace. You know, obviously everybody's to their own. But I do it at this pace so you can, especially for the beginners, you can grasp what I'm, I'm doing. And it doesn't then become... Like the late, uh, one lady said to me, frightening. It became too frightening to the point where she just couldn't see what others were doing and it frightened her because she thought she had to be at that speed for her to be able to do flower arrangements. A new young lady, I think if I can recall correctly, she was about, she said she was 24, 25. So... Bless her. And I, I, I replied and said that's not the case. I just go slower for people of a in her situation. Let's just alter that. Get that leaf under there. Right, guys. There is our lantern. Um. Again, I've gone up and over more than I sometimes do. I sometimes have this perhaps a bit more like that. But I want to, I can easily tilt those up 
you know a little bit more to bring it to looking more like so um, but I like it where they fall and they've got quite something you know to stay a statement piece and just having the little flowers in the bottom instead of a candle you know is just following or making it flow from what's up here into there even if it's just a few little bits and again by using um, these baubles at the bottom because it looked a bit bare on the end it doesn't here because even though that's at the top but it did it here so and that caught my eye so to rectify that by placing in a couple of Christmas decorations or baubles as we call them in the UK at the bottom that then oh my cat's back again that then you know took that space up and I like to bring things coming outwards as well having the even little wispy bits in adds the contrast and the movement to the arrangement and also by just placing little bits in like the cones or the baubles you know of different sorts not all the same but the same color but different patterns on them you know also creates an interest you know it's it's can be you know pleasing to the eye that there's different things and by having di you know like your um <laughs> it's like he's listening having things like your fiddlehead fern and just lighter leaves as well with the darker leaves you know bounces off of each other and also I've had a just a little bit of white to represent like frostiness or snow but not too much because I wanted to try and keep it relatively gold and bl navy blue or just blue and but I've noticed I noticed that it's got like a silvery white stars on the ribbon as well hence the reason I've used these what I look like little stars to represent what the stars on there and again adding bigger leaves as well as just thinner leaves don't just think that you've got to add thin leaves because the more thinner leaves you know when I mean thinner I mean you know something like these you know the vines or even like the the uh, ficus or pine needles or things like that um, it's okay adding those if that's the look you want to go for but you will find that you'll be adding more of them because they're so narrow in shape now if you added something a bit more rounder to go with the pointed leaves then you get that contrast and that balance uh, against each other like I've added the eucalyptus uh, the eucalyptus silver dollar with you know these pointy leaves because they're more round shape and the round shape seems a bit more like comforting to the eye you know as with the pointed what shape leaves they can be more of a sharp look so hence the reason I mix them both so they blend together in harmony and again with the uh, the broader leaves here as well the rounded shape the 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 area because you can see through them but they're a rounded shape so it's a softening look um it's not just everything's pointed like these ferns and things like that so it, it again they they it's like a marriage made in heaven that they uh, harmonize and they're you know with each other and they blend well and it's pleasing to the eye so and by just adding a bow at the top the color of what you're doing and uh, that also softens it up you don't have to have a bow you can just make the arrangement full of flowers and foliage but I always like to add a bow on these because I feel again they add a bit more 
um, exquisiteness or elegance to the arrangement and people from my own experience like to see that you know instead of just flowers and foliage they like to see something a bit more as as they say here a bit more upper market where you have basically something added in which is a bit more elegant and um, looks more expensive so and it and it adds that expense to your customers by looking at it that way if you can see and that's what they like and even by adding like the poinsettias because they are round as well as well as the roses roses as people know are a, a beautiful flower they, they find it a, a romantic flower especially red roses um but doesn't matter what colour the roses are classed as a romantic flower. So adding something soft and romantic like that to the arrangement as well is more pleasing to the eye. And also again, it's like a married marriage made in heaven, and it harmonises and balances out with each other. Beautiful. So I hope that helps, guys. Um, and if you've got a um, a lantern of any sort it doesn't matter you don't have to have one like me mine's just a basic one um i i keep saying i'm gonna look for something a bit more with a bit more character to it but i've just got plain at the moment but um you can use round you don't have to have square any type and just again remember when you're laying everything out flat cross them over like that your stems so that they are like that so then when it comes to tying your cable tie you are tying them both together but as you get further along you will notice that some uh, you you may need to start tying a, a cable tie around every so often you know at different stages because they will move and you will <laughs> you'll probably get fed up of them moving and you having to keep putting them back in place hence the reason i always place in another cable tie uh, at a, a later stage to attach around the flowers and foliage that i've just placed down because i've got them in the position i want them i want to keep them there so i put a cable tie around and I do that so it doesn't matter how many cable ties you place on you know um, but it's they're just there to keep everything in place as you go through different levels or heights as you're going up and adding more to it and then you can also um, again you won't see the cable ties they'll be underneath so that your mechanics will be hidden and again, like me, if you feel that you wanted to add something extra in it or you you missed a bit of foliage, dip it in the glue and glue it to a stem or nearer to the centre point, the central stem, stem where you put your tie wraps as possible. Um, and then fluff it up. Once you've got your tie wraps and cable ties where you'd like them to be um, and you've got everything in, fluff it up to your desire guys and just keep playing with it and have fun with it um, so it, you get it into the position that you wish and once you're happy attach it on so i hope you have fun guys and i hope you um, enjoy having a go at it so all the best and again please subscribe share and like and you know it really does help me, you know, by even giving me a thumbs up and sending you little comments. It really does get help get my business recognised. It's a funny thing, the YouTube. Um, it's a wonderful thing, but funny thing. The more people who comment and the more people give you a thumbs up, the more your business gets noticed. That's just how it is. It's not usually on um, the amount of videos you, you post even though that helps it's more on you know the thumbs up in the comments so i would would really appreciate that guys and it would mean so much to me so again have a wonderful day give it a go and enjoy so god bless guys good health have take care of yourselves and i'll see you tomorrow and i love you all my global family
Bye for now. Bye bye. Come on, Mr. Marley. I know. Let mommy do this. So there's your your ribbon and your bow. Again, with the stars, as you can see, hence the reason I've done the little white flowers to represent like a star. Your beautiful uh, blue roses where they go darker. It's like an ombre look. Darker in the centre. With, oh, it's Marley, with your... Um, cones don't rub your body against it with your cones and your baubles now you've got a glittery one there your Christmas ornaments um, you've got a blue matte one there you've got a gloss one there you've got a patterned one there and then you've got that crystal effect there then you've also got your look at your berries look how they sparkle got those then you've got your white little seeded foliage and then you've got these palms your eucalyptus silver dollar like a gray blue on green your ficus your vine and your gold fern if I just turn it round your fiddlehead fern your conifer um, trying to think what else oh and I did place in two here we go two big hydrangea leaves here as well and then again on the bottom I've just had a, another uh, poinsettia like that one aren't they look beautiful another ombre look um, on the bottom with a few little bits of foliage as well so again I hope you enjoyed that guys give it a go and have great fun and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye for now.